Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and in this video, we are going to go over the technical data sheet for Primer Servicer. This is JP202, which is Shop Lines Primer Servicer, 2K Servicer. So, why don't you come look over my shoulder and we'll get started. All right, let's go over the technical data sheet for Shop Line JP202 2K High Build Primer Servicer. The background, JP202, is a fast drying gray two component high build primer servicer designed for today's automotive collision centers. JH301 undercoat hardener should be used in cool to normal temperatures. JH302 undercoat hardener should be used in hot temperatures or when longer pot life is needed. So what this is saying is there's a primer and then it's got two different catalyst selections that you can use. One's for normal conditions, which is the 301, and the other one's for hot, you know, hot temperatures or longer pot life. And again, the shop line name for this primer is JP202 2K High Build Primer Surfacer. It can be reduced with uh, shop lines reducers. The numbers for shop lines reducers are JR505 Fast, and that's for temperatures from 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit or JR506 medium reducer, which is for 65 Fahrenheit to 75, or slow, which is JR507, which is for 75 to 85. The hardeners are JH301 and JH302. The 301 is for normal temp, and the JH302 is for high temperatures. So let's talk about compatibility substrates. It says clean, sanded, and etch or epoxy prime steel, galvanized and aluminum, sanded and clean body filler, sanded and clean fiberglass and SMC, that sheet molded compound, cured, cleaned and sanded OEM and refinished coatings. It says apply two full coats over sensitive finishes, completely overlapping substrate. Now one thing I want to mention about this because I've been questions about, I've been questioned about this is uh, you may be if you read over this real quick, you may think that it's saying that this is designed to go over bare metal because it says, you know, compatibility substra compatible substrates, clean and sanded, then you kind of skip over and see a steel, galvanized, and aluminum. But notice right there it says sanded and etched or epoxy primed. So the metal has to be either etched primed or epoxy primed before applying the servicer. It is not designed for uh, bare metal. Also says apply two coats over sensitive finishes, and what's that? That's talking about like if it's a you know fresher paint or uh, the different layers when you're feather edging the different layers of paint. You want to apply two coats over the entire surfacer. Don't try to you know end your pattern in a feather edged area. So go ahead and prime the entire surface that you've been working on. Okay, so what other materials can this primer be applied on top of? It can be applied on top of polyester primer filler, etch primer, plastic adhesion promoter, epoxy primer, the white, gray, and black, and that's the shop line epoxy primer. So it can be applied on top of those products. It's compatible with those. So what can be applied on top of this? So in other words, let's say we had some epoxy on there, and it's, you know, of course, the primer surfacer can be applied on top of epoxy, but what can be applied on top of this surfacer? And here it says acrylic base coat, acrylic urethane base coat, acrylic enamel, acrylic enamel activated, and direct gloss acrylic urethane. And I also want to mention here that that's what's compatible, but primer surfacer must be sanded. You cannot apply any product on top of primer surfacer without first sanding it. So it must be sanded for applying these products. Preparation, surface cleaning. Needs to be sanded or needs to be cleaned with wax and grease remover or plastic cleaner. The reason they give both because you, you really don't want to use a solvent wax and grease remover on plastic parts. So if it's plastic parts, you're going to use a, a plastic cleaner or if it's metal, you know, a metal part, you're going to use wax and grease remover. Sanding, you need to sand the surface with 120 to 180 on bare metal. So if you got bare metal, it needs to be sanded with 120 to 180, some etch primer or epoxy applied, and then this primer servicer. 
If it's an old finish or body filler, they recommend anywhere between 180 and 240 grit sandpaper before applying, uh, before applying this primer surfacer. Mixing ratios. Okay, this is the, the mixing ratio that you mix this. This is, it has several different ways you can, you can mix this, and we'll go over those. It says here that a, you, there's a 411, and that's four parts primer to one part hardener to one part reducer. For example, it, if you use, use an ounces, uh, you'd mix four ounces of the primer to one ounce of the hardener to one ounce of the reducer. If you didn't need that much, you would put two ounces of primer to half an ounce of hardener to half an ounce of reducer. If you needed more, you would put eight ounces of primer to two ounces of hardener to two ounces of reducer. So no matter how much you need, you needed to keep that ratio the same. Now you can also mix this up as a spray filler and that's where it's thicker and uh, you mix that four to one so basically you just don't add that one part reducer so you mix four parts primer to one part catalyst and that's going to be a lot thicker and if you're spraying a large area it may be difficult to get this to flow out well like on hell damage where we're doing a lot of priming this may not flow out too good this method but you can play around with that you can also put a half part reducer you know if you're wanting some of the filling properties still but you don't want it uh, you know, too thick where it's hard to spray, you can use a half part of reducer instead of that full part. Okay, let's talk about the pot life. Now what the pot life is, is how long does this have in the gun before it starts hardening? You have one hour at 70 degrees Fahrenheit at the 411. You have 30 minutes if it's mixed four half one with that half part of reducer. You have 20 minutes at 70 degrees if it's four to one if you don't put any reducer at all so if you're not using reducer at all you don't have a long pot life now notice this is all saying 70 degrees fahrenheit you got to keep in mind this is where they the testing environment they test this uh, if it's a lot colder you know that's going to take a lot longer i mean you're going to have more time if it's hotter you're not going to have that long so keep it that in mind as well additives you can add a flexible additive one ounce per ready to spray quart. So once you have it all mixed and ready to go, you can add one ounce per sprayable quart. Another additive is this, is a accelerator. If you're wanting to speed up the drying process, you can also add one ounce per quart. And I'm not going over every number, every shop line number here, but if you want a copy of this, you go down in the description, you can click a link and it'll bring you to this technical technical data sheet where you can view this yourself for you know future reference. Application, it says two to four coats, so a minimum of two coats, a maximum of four. So you don't want to put six coats on there. You know it's not designed for that. Any anywhere from two to four. Air pressure, it says HVLP guns, 10 uh, PSI at the air cap. Now the air cap's right here and probably uh, your gun don't have a regulator there. Most guns you adjust them here at the gun. And the reason they do that on HVLP, depending on the gun, it's going to be different pressures to get this 10 PSI. So some guns may take 18 at the gun, some may take 28, you know, to get that 10 PSI. So it's going to depend on the gun you have. But a general rule of thumb, anywhere from 20 to 28 is probably going to be in that range somewhere. Conventional gun, 40 to 50 PSI, and notice this is at the gun right here at the regulator you, you use right here at the gun. So 40 to 50. Now that's the older traditional gun. Uh, probably don't see a lot of those anymore, but you know there may be some out there. If you're using one, you know that's what they recommend. Gun setup is a 1.6 to 1.8 millimeter. So that's the fluid tip size that you need is a 1.6 to 1.8. Okay, dry times. Your flash time between coats, this is the amount of time you have between coats. For example, if you put a, a coat of this down, how long do you have to wait before you put the next coat and then the next coat? Up to four coats. So five to 10 minutes at 70 degrees. Now notice this is at 70 degrees. If it's colder, it's gonna take longer. If it's hotter, you know, it's not gonna take quite as long. So five to 10 minutes flash time between coats. Air dry at 70 degrees. Let's talk about how long does it take before you can sand this and top coat it. If you're mixing, if you're using the mixing ratio of 411, 
you need to allow it to dry an hour and a half to three hours before you can sand it and top coat it. If you're using the four half one with that half a part of reducer, you need to allow it to dry three to six hours. If you're using just the four to one, no reducer at all, you need to allow it to dry a minimum of eight hours. So notice the less reducer you have, the longer you have to let, allow it to dry. Uh, I usually like to let primer dry as long as possible to eliminate any shrinkage uh, problems that may arise. Now if you're a production shop, you probably don't have that luxury, but if you're in no hurry, I usually allow it to dry overnight just to be sure that it is good and dry. But this is what they recommend depending on how much reducer that you use. Now you can also force dry this if you're a body shop or a production shop. You can dry it for 20 to 30 minutes at 140 degrees Fahrenheit and then you can sand and top coat it. Or if you use infrared, you can dry it for 10 to 15 minutes before sanding and top coating. So some variations there depending if you have a, a bake system or not and depending if you use reducer or not. In my opinion, I would allow it to dry as long as possible, even if it extends these uh, recommendations a little bit, just to assure that it is good and dry and you won't have any shrinkage. Clean up. Clean spray guns, guns, cups, storage pots, etc. thoroughly with JR Reducer, general purpose solvent or other appropriate solvents after each use. And the key here is to clean it immediately after each use. And if you remember over here, some of the pot lives are as short, you know, 20 minutes, that's not long. So you don't want to prime something, go to lunch, come back and clean your gun. Uh, that's gonna, it may harden in there or start gelling. And you take a chance on messing your gun up or making it very difficult to clean. You know, spend two or three times the amount of time cleaning that you normally would if you'd just immediately uh, clean it out. And I usually just use a lacquer thinner, uh, a cleanup thinner. And then it goes over the properties here. Now I'm not going to go over every one of these properties. Uh, if you want, I've got this down in the description, a link to this technical data sheet. You can go down and click it and print it. And next time you go to use this product, I recommend looking over it. Properties talks about the VOCs, you know, dry, fi dry film, build per coat, and square footage coverage. You know, if you're interested in those, you can go read those for yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you like this uh, video, I'm going to have more videos, more technical data sheets that I go over like this on this channel. Be sure and subscribe to us. Let others know about this channel. Thanks for watching, and we will talk to you in the next video.